Speaking of Senator Allen, Steve Yensich, Michigan Lodging and Tourism Association. You were with the senator yesterday. What happened? Well, as a matter of fact, there were commerce and uh, uh, tourism committee hearings. Mm -hmm. We had uh, a group of representatives, golf courses, campgrounds, CVBs, convention and visitor bureaus. Uh, the senator wanted to hear what the uh, summer outcomes were, and I mm. brought some uh, information from Smith, Dat uh, uh, Smith Travel Research, and that data indicated that uh, Michigan doubled up on, on uh, national performance, and in Detroit, the results August to August were triple what, what uh, the rest of the country was doing. Wow. So, you know, yeah, basically on average, the, the national performance was about 6% higher. And no one should sneeze at that. They should be very pleased. But Michigan was 15.5% higher. These are and people coming from outside the state. This is just a measure of occupancy levels oh, I see. on a statewide basis compared to national performance. Wow. So to double up on those, those national results, and then in Detroit, they were triple the, the outcomes. So, huh. you know, now, now, obviously, good weather had a Great weather. There. We had some stronger uh, economic conditions, but those two factors affected the rest of the country to a large measure as well. So something unique is taking place, and we contend it's that Pure Michigan campaign beginning to find full traction. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so you know, pivotally important that we keep that program going. Uh, that makes Lance Enderly proud, I would think, that your state uh, had so many people uh, able to enjoy themselves this summer. Is the economy turning around? You're running for Congress in the 8th Congressional District as a Democrat against uh, sitting Congressman Mike Rogers. Correct, and uh, thank you for having me down here this morning. Certainly. Um, I, I definitely see it as a great turnaround. Uh, it's a seasonal thing. I'd like to see a little bit more growth, definitely. I mean, tourism is one of the things that is very crucial to Michigan's economic stability. Speaking but of trips, you had an interesting trip to the nomination here to run for Congress. Can you quickly sort of recap what happened? Uh, in June, I ran as a write-in candidate to get on the Demo to get the Democratic nomination. Mm -hmm. uh, some things happened. Short end of the story, I am on the ballot. I am the Democratic candidate for the 8th Congressional District. You were placed on the ballot because the fellow who was running decided not to run, the Democrat, right? Um, Technically, yes, that's the way it happened. If you look at it, I won it as a writing, considering the gentleman was not living in the state. Oh, I see. But due to the process, I was appointed to the mm -hmm. ballot. And how has it been going so far? I mean, have you been shaking a lot of hands? How are you reaching it people? It's going great. I, uh, the amount of support that I'm getting on the street is amazing. People, I'm finding more and more people are pretty much disgruntled with our current representation in Washington, and they're demanding a change. What are your uh, sort of tenants? What's your personal branding? It's about accountability and accessibility. It's something this district's been lacking for a long time. It's about bringing the seat back to the people instead of special interest in K Street. Why do you say that? Because I look at the difference in the bank accounts. My competitor has over a million dollars in the bank account, and as of last night, I have $137.42. It's not about the money. I'm not taking Packer special interest money, and I'm the only candidate in the country that's doing so. Really? Uh, so how are you going to fund your campaign? I mean, these things are expensive, aren't they? They are because we've let them get out of hand. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think people are pretty, if you ask most people, they'll tell you they don't like the TV ads, they don't like the robocalls, they don't like the garbage they get sent in their mailbox. They want to meet the people representing them. They're getting tired of it. And when you look at the cost that's put into that, and you've got the number of unemployed in this state, that's pretty unconscionable to spend that amount of money that doesn't really benefit a lot of jobs. So... It's, it's, it's sort of a personal mantra. I'm working hard. I'm working with what I've got. I'm doing it the American way. It's through hard work and ingenuity that we're doing this. Where do you live? I live here in East Lansing. East Lansing. And what, what do you do for a living? I am currently a grad student. I, I'm a certified teacher, but due to budget cuts and the lack that we don't have population in this state, I'm one of the many laid-off teachers in the state of Michigan. <clears throat> so you're an unemployed candidate for Congress. Correct. That has to be unique, too, I'm thinking, right? Sure, but it means I'm coming from the people. I can understand what the people are feeling and thinking mm -hmm. throughout this state, not just this district, but the state and this country. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Washington to represent the state and this country. So it gives me a little bit better insight to what the people are actually thinking, feeling, and how they're living day to day. You ran for state office 12 years ago? Correct. Which position? I ran for the state house of representatives, which at that time was the 106th district. 
which encompassed Alpena, Sheboygan, Presque and Charlevoix counties. Mm -hmm. Since through redistricting, that district has changed, and it's now the 105th. Um, who are your political heroes? Oh, George Washington, Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison. Nobody since then? Not really. <laughs> what did you make of uh, Democrat Jimmy, Car Jimmy Carter the other day saying, the former president, that his post-presidency is superior to all the rest? I give Jimmy credit a lot of Carter, or Jimmy Carter a lot of respect. Uh, I agree with him. He has done more past presidency without asking for anything than anybody that I've seen. And, and look at his peace initiatives, look at the way he's brought different pockets of the world together. You can question that if you want. But he's a man of integrity and honor. And I guess that would be one modern political hero that I have. And it might not be so much on his policy. I might, I, I, some of the policy I don't agree with that he uh, mm -hmm. has, but it's the fact that when he says something, he stands behind it. He's a man of integrity. So whether you agree with him or not, you got to give him respect for that. Lance Enderly, candidate for Congress in the 8th Congressional District. He's running as the Democrat, and uh, he's asking for your vote. Thank you very much for being here this morning. Thank you very much for having me. 14 before the hour, Michael Patrick Shields back with more on this uh, Michigan Lodging and Tourism Legislative Conference Day right after this.